All right, so today we're going to change the font that is running in the Amnesia game uh, with our own custom font. It could be any font that you want, but some are, of course, better than others because it really depends on the font, how readable it is, and everything like that. Uh, and this is only possible with full conversion mods uh, and not custom stories because you need to modify some of the main game configs. So I'm going to assume that you have a mod up and going, and if you don't, I do have a video on how you can set one up uh, if you need to know. And if you are using a custom story, I'm afraid you can't do it without the use of a mod. Uh, so, also, this video is done on a Mac computer, but the program I'm going to be using is not actually available for Mac, so you're going to have to use a Windows environment. Uh, so therefore, I'm going to be using a virtual machine that I have on VirtualBox uh, to do that. But if you're using a Windows computer, you won't have to worry about it. But if you're only using a Mac computer, you might not actually be able to do this without the Windows uh, virtual machine. So first of all I'm just going to show you a little example of how the fonts that I have set up for myself or for or this example sort of. It The font in the GUI is still the same but um, the font here at the men menu is as you can see it's different from the uh, original and if I am to actually start up a game not sure if I actually had a note in here to demonstrate with, but as you can see, the loading font is a little different. And uh, if I, for example, pick up, well, I think the pickup is still default, but the hint has a different font up there, as you can see. And uh, I don't think there's any text on the note. Nope. If I actually go back to the menu and start up this one. I have a note in here that I can show how the text in the note looks and that is it. So that's the font for the text and this is just a note from the main game. So yeah, uh, if you are wondering how to change the font, let's jump over to the tu tutorial so I can show you how you do it. Alright, so the font that I'm going to be using in this example is called Huxtable. Uh, Huxtable Reg Regular. Uh, it is a free commercial font, or not? No, yeah, uh, free for commercial use. Uh, that you that I found on thousand and one fonts dot com, I think it was, and um, that's a pretty good site where you can look for fonts. And you, if you're gonna use them for things like this, you probably want to make sure that you don't uh, get any like copyright strikes and stuff like that. Like that, you're actually allowed to use the font. Um, so. Um, uh, I'm going to use this one in this example. I, I guess I could link it in the description if you'd like to check it out. Uh, but what we're going to be doing with this, this is by the way a TTF file, which you should know, or you might know, this is a default font file type. Uh, normally you could just double click it and install it on Mac or Windows, I, I don't think it matters. It's the same, you just double click it and it will install the, the font for you. Um, so. Now, right now, I'm just going to place it in my Dropbox right here, which is on Virtual Machine, uh, so that you can uh, transfer it, because uh, that's the only way I really have it to transfer to this Virtual Machine. I should update. So let's just wait for that to start up. All right, so now we have started up the Virtual Machine, and uh, if I actually am to open up the Dropbox folder, you can see that I have this TDF file that I placed in the same location here. This one. So if I actually do take it away from there, in here, it should disappear from this folder as soon as it updates. As you see there, it's gone because uh, it's Dropbox. And um, now that we have this file over here, you, if you're using a Windows computer, you don't really need to transfer it, of course. Uh, I'm going to go open up the browser and search up BM font, which should be the name of the program that you will need to install. And let's see here, angelcode.com, products, BM font. Uh, the bitmap font generator. It's because Amnesia uses bitmap fonts. So uh, you'll basically just need to download, you might as well just download the normal one, uh, currently 1.13. So you can just download that and install it. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to open it up. BM font right here. It looks like this. Pretty simple. Uh, but you might not know exactly what to do with this. So first of all, we want to go on Options, Font Settings. 
and this is where you choose what font file you're going to be using. Uh, you have to choose it in this font box right here, but if you do not have it installed, it should it won't appear there. These are only your installed fonts. So if you actually do install it, I think it will appear on this list, uh, but you don't need to install it. You can just click on this triple dot to browse to the file. Huxtable regular right here. I'm going to open it up, but don't forget that after you open it up here, it's not going to be selected until you actually find it on the list. This will just make it so that it appears on the list. So I'm going to do age and go down to Huxtable right there. Make sure it's selected there. You can keep all of this default. You don't really need to do anything with that. So just click OK and it will change to that font. Now you want to go on export options because there are a few things that you need to specify to export this. Uh, first of all, we want to put the bit depth to 32 just to make it a bit <coughs> a bit better a bit yeah better quality and then down here on presets you want to put it to white text with alpha because in amnesia you might have noticed that the text is uh, usually white it's not black fonts it's white fonts uh, this is just because uh, what it does here is that it generates the font into a single graphical image a dds file which you actually by the way, got to define here DDS direct draw surface and make sure it's in XML because it will give you two files one of the picture and one of the config, the FNT config file. And then compression, you probably want to use DXT5 for the best results. And uh, just make sure you do all that 32 white text with alpha, XML, DDS, DXT5. Click OK. Now, uh, before you export it, you want to make sure that you select all of them. You can do Control A or just uh, select all characters right there. So it'll select everything in the table because it will only export what you have selected. And you won't need to do anything with this because you pretty much only only need the basic Latin. And uh, not all fonts support everything else, anyways. But after that, now we are going to just save bitmap font as Control S. And now, now let's just give it a name, and I'm going to call it Huxtable just Huxtable and uh, click Save and it should export it might give you a progress bar here but it's usually pretty quick so uh, it just gives you the FNT file and the DDS file right there so now you can close out of that and uh, you can put those back over to the um, Dropbox folder well actually you don't need to do that because that's just how I do it how I put it back to my Mac environment and as soon as it's done uploading which it is right now I'm just going to shut down the virtual machine because now I have the files that are required. All right, so now we have um, the fonts or the FNT and DDS have appeared here on my Mac environment, and uh, you can just drag those anywhere you'd like. Uh, you pretty much just gotta define the put them in a location uh, that we're going to create soon. Uh, but if you actually do open up the um, FNT file. It should look something like this. It basically just says all the options in an XML format. It's a pretty big text file which tells you all the sizes of each character just to make everything work in combination with this Huxtable underscore zero DDS texture file. Now let's go ahead and put it into the game. So uh, since I said I'm going to assume you have a custom or a mod already set up so uh, right now I'm in the Amnesia directory, which should be the same on Windows and Mac. Um, and I'm going to go down to my mod example right here. And uh, it's an isolated mod, so I'm just going to open up that. And here we have all the folders. You might not have all these folders. These are just uh, a lot of folders. Uh, some of them are not necessary for using a mod. But um, you probably have maps, main menu, and config. You will at, at least need those. And you might have uh, like sounds and music and stuff like that. Uh, now I'm going to, if you do not have this folder, you want to create a folder called fonts. F-O-N-T-S. And you want to add it to your resources CFG file. Mine looks like this right now. It has all the directories, mod example, slash config, main menu, maps, music, etc. Uh, all the folders that I have in here are added to my resources file. So make sure you do that. <laughs> okay. And uh, now let's go into the fonts folder and create a new folder. I'm just going to call it ing. 
uh, you might not actually need this folder. It's just that I like to keep it in the same structure as the um, Amnesia, the main game, the main setup. So I'm going to put it in there and uh, drop these files in there. So we have Huxtable, FNT, and DDS right there. Now let's go back to the config folder. If you open up the menu.cfg, this is the main file for the fonts, but there's, I think there is one font location in game CFG, and uh, there might be something in the, some of the files. Uh, but open up the menu CFG file. And this is the main place where you actually do uh, do add the file or the, the path to it. So pretty much clo very close to the top, you see top menu font. It'll probably say something like uh, uh, menu main menu or something like that, GUI main menu or something like that. Uh, by default if you haven't modified it and uh, you can specify the font uh, or the path I mean by going uh, typing out the folder slash fonts slash Huxable and right now actually uh, it's a little odd that it actually worked before because I have it in the ing folder fonts ing Huxable but you don't necessarily need that path you just need the name so if you put in huxtable.fnt or whatever the name of your font is, it should find that FNT file and use the associated DDS file to display the font. Uh, otherwise, that is the main menu font. So that is the, that's th that's the font for the different buttons in the main menu. If you want to change the uh, other types of fonts, uh, there are many other ones. Like for example, uh, this is for the credits. There are two fonts in the credits. Uh, and I have currently set them both to lavi.fnt. And uh, down here we have inventory, which is the header and the default. You can also specify these uh, to your own fonts as you like. Um, now, if you go further down, here is completion counter. I'm not actually sure what this one is used for. Uh, completion counter, it doesn't really ring any bells, but. Uh, <clears throat> Here we have the hints. If you'd like to use a custom font for the hints, then you can put that right there. And for the journal, you put uh, specify the name of a font file in here for the menu. And the, the menu is basically when you press J to open up the journal with the, the Memento uh, Diary and Journal. And the default font is basically what font is going to be used in the note itself. So you, you can specify those there as you'd like. And uh, lastly is the load screen, which you can specify right here. Uh, that's the last part in the menu CFG file. So we want to save that, close it. And uh, right now I don't actually have those other fonts. I moved them away, as you can see. I had These are all the fonts that I used before in the example. So uh, the game will probably crash if I do not add them back, unless I modify the configs to not use them. Uh, but that's basically it. So actually I could try starting up the game because I don't think it'll crash unless I actually go to an area where it's using a font that isn't present. But let's see if it actually works. No, I don't think it worked. Because the, uh, yeah, it didn't work. Um, <clears throat> but that was that, that was purely because I didn't add the fonts. I have some spef specified as you saw there. Um, there is one, if you just do Command or Control F to find FNT or something like that, you will find uh, <clears throat> player general focus text font. Uh, this is the font for um, for what is appearing as you're looking at it. Uh, I think that was actually the only one in here. Yeah, this is the only occurrence of FNT in here. And there might be some other occurrences in different files around here, but the menu CFG is the main one for the fonts. So you want to specify them in there. So uh, actually, if I do, let me just put Huxtable in all of them, in all of the font places. OK, so the problem was actually not uh, related to this. It was something else that I had been messing around with. Uh, but now let's start the game and see if the if it loads properly this time. All right, as you can see, the font is now using Huxtable. And since I input it in all of them, it should probably be using that same font in all of the places. For example, the note. So now it's using uh, Huxtable in here as well. It wasn't using this font last time, but now it is. And uh, it should be using that for the, the hints as well. As you can see at the top, it's, a, it's the same font for the hints. 
and it should be the same for uh, let's say if we open the this is the journal uh, menu and for example uh, if you go in inventory and hover over here you will see that the font that is used down there used to keep the lantern flame alive that's the font that is pairing and uh, if we go back it'll load well that's very brief but that's the font itself and now we have changed that so uh, that's pretty much about it really uh, there are a few things a few more things that you can do with fonts but those are mostly just experimental that you can just mess around with and see what fits uh, I have downloaded quite a lot of fonts I downloaded probably in total like 25 different fonts before or maybe even 30 35 uh, fonts that I tried out uh, with this method uh, because most of them did not look very good in Amnesia because a lot of them will be either a little bit cut if they are big fonts uh, some uh, a lot of them will also be very unclear if they are very thick or very curvy or very fancy they will not be very readable but that's just because of the font itself um, not because of Amnesia or uh, the game or anything like that it's just because the font is made to be fancy and not the most readable so therefore I recommend using a very readable font of course you can use something like Helvetica or Arial but those are pretty boring fonts I don't think they fit in in Amnesia because Amnesia should be somewhat uh, defined somewhat uh, textured you know if you know what I mean um, and not just completely plain because, for example, Helvetica is like a super plain, it's, it's a somewhat fancy font, but it's nothing special at all. It's just, uh, if an I is basically just a line. So, uh, it's, uh, I think it's actually the default font for, um, for Mac and maybe even Windows, and it's usually the, the default font for signs and stuff like that. It's a, a very popular font, you might know of it. But anyways, what I'm trying to say here is that the fonts that I found to look the best, if you actually go on 1001 font, 1001fonts.com, uh, you can specify them by category, and if you go for handwritten ones, you can look for some uh, that are not straight or technical or just square fonts, but that are slightly curvy, slightly drawn, you know, and still pretty readable. And that's the font. That's where I found all these fonts. So um, that's a pretty good place to look if you want to find it. Uh, otherwise, that should be it. And uh, let me stop rambling on about now. So I'll just end the video here. If you found it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would like the video. It motivates me to make more of these tutorials. Uh, other than that, that would be everything. I will thank you for watching, and I will see you later.